Hello everyone and welcome to our beginning of the year talk. This is something I love, a time I love to share with you all. Um, you know, there's so much between the holidays, there's so much energy around the holidays, being with family, and then there's always all this hype about the new year. You know, new year, new you, new expectations. It's like we're going to rip off the Band-Aid and everything will be different. The person you were on December 31st is totally different from the one on January 1st. And so as everyone comes in and I see you and I say hi, I just want to say hi. And I love to kind of sit down and think and think about creativity, think about my life, my experience, what I want out of it, what's healthy, what can I improve on, uh, where do I want to go, where do I want to be? So I l just wanted to say hi to all of you. If you see me looking to the side, I have my comments over here so I can say hi to you guys. I see a whole bunch of our Creative Circle members. I see Mary Jane and Sharon and Alice and I see Lynn and Terry and Amy. Thank you all for uh, holding tight as we were getting started. Um, yesterday, I got to have this amazing live paint along with our Creative Circle members. We did this beautiful stained glass kind of feeling trees on a winter day. And I just really enjoyed painting along with our Creative Circle members. Uh, they're such great people and I have loved watching the progress that they have. Um, so if you are just meeting us, if you're just meeting me, my name is Shelby Dillon and I'm going to kind of go through and give you some thoughts and some things to help you think about your creativity in the new year. Um, hey Beth, good to see you. Um, Beth is not too far from us. She's a little bit south and Lynn is in Tennessee and Sherry's from Michigan. Hey, Claire is all the way up in Boston. I hope you guys are um, not too cold. Um, all right, let me go ahead and get this going. So, um, you know, as we talk about feeling good about your creativity, as we talk about feeling confident, as we talk about going from I don't know what I'm doing to I am an artist. I love to think about how we can become confident painters. I mean, we all want to have our best creative year ever, but I, I never want to diminish what we've done before. And especially January 1st, we all have great intentions. Um, I, wanna, I want y'all to comment in the comments how many of you guys have started or thought about having New Year's resolutions. How many of you um, make, you know, we're, we're, gosh, 12 days in. How many of you were like December 31st was Saturday, on Sunday was the first. You're like, okay, I have all these resolutions. And then you're like, eh, I'll wait till Monday. Um, go ahead and say if that's you. If not, if you're resolutely following your resolutions, that's amazing. Um, I mean, when we, I think of so many of the popular resolutions, if you think about them, they're, I, the top resolutions when you Google them are like, I want to lose weight. I want to save money. I want to get in shape. None of these things, when I think about them, they don't feel fun. They feel restrictive. They feel like they're all coming from a place of scarcity. Um, I want to lose weight. I want to have less. I want to save money. I want to use less. I want to um, go to the gym more. I want to, you know, it, they all sound like adding restrictions. They all sound like having, making life more complicated and difficult, right? And, you know, what if we shifted our thoughts? What if instead of thinking about things from a scarcity perspective, we went to abundance. What if we started thinking about things more in terms of, I want more play. 
I want to explore. I want more love in my life. What if we went from being like, I have to hoard this, I have to restrict this, I have to moderate this, to how can I expand and have more and be more and accept more? What if we allowed ourselves to come from a place of playing instead of a place of discipline and necessity and, and um, restrictions and regulations? Um, <laughs> so let's eat more junk and gain weight. <laughs> well, that's one way to think about it. Or it can be like, let's find more ways to play. Let's find more ways to explore food. You know, it doesn't have to be about just restricting ourselves and denying ourselves. And, you know, when we think about that in our creative life, it's, you know, what if I told you the secret to confident came painting came down to just like three habits, three behaviors that we can carry on into our everyday lives that will help make us, help us make progress, help us expand, help us to allow more creative abundance in our life. It really just comes down to three actions. And when I say three actions, three habits, it's really that simple. These three actions, when I say them, they're, they're super simple. It's paint a lot, try new things, and it's find your circle. Now, that doesn't mean do busier. That doesn't mean, uh, that doesn't mean, you know, stress yourself out and it doesn't mean overcommit yourself it means digging down and figuring out what best aligns with you and your purpose and then doing more of that and doing less of what doesn't suit you it's really pretty simple so when i say paint a lot i mean that like come into it with a sense of play you know, when you paint a lot, you make so much progress. Instead of going after like one really big painting, break it down into several small paintings. You're going to find yourself problem solving more quickly, more often, and you're going to make a lot more progress than if you just do one big painting at a time. You know, another great way to paint a lot is to follow step-by-step -step tutorials until you make progress, until you know, follow along with someone else, find a teacher, take lessons from them. Because until you get to a place where you can do it by yourself, you, you do have to follow along. You have to follow someone else. You have to learn how to mix you, colors. You have to learn what goes next until you're ready to take the next step by yourself. And you've learned those skills. And once you've learned those skills, you can start applying them yourself independently. And once you're doing that independently, I say tackle a 30 or 100 day project. And when I say a 30 or 100 day project, I'm not trying to make more work for you. And I don't certainly don't mean 30 paintings in 30 days. Here's a secret. Whenever I do a 30 or 100 day project, I don't do it in 30 or 100 days. Some days I'll do two paintings. Other days I'll do no paintings. Sometimes I won't paint for a week. It's more like I'm going to do, I'm going to paint 100 birds and see where this takes me. And Sometimes those 100-day projects take a year to complete, but it gives me the focus and it gives me a subject matter and I can look at bird number one and I can look at bird 100 and I can see the evolution of my ideas. I can see the evolution of my skills. I can see how much progress I've made from bird number one where I couldn't figure out how to do feathers to bird 100 where I, I was doing crazy things and it was so much fun. Here's a great example. I did a 100 day project uh, several years ago. And on day number one, I decided to do windows. And we were living in a city and I thought the windows were really cool. I thought the storefronts were really cool and I wanted to paint them. So the first one is okay, but the 100th one is so much more dynamic. I made so much project 
progress over this project just by focusing a little and giving myself the freedom to explore and play. So if you need step-by-step -step tutorials, over in our Learn, Paint, Grow free Facebook group, um, we are going to be posting today, we're going to be posting a couple free demonstrations for you to follow along to try a free painting demonstration, to kind of follow along, see the step-by-step -step how it goes. So here's a couple of our members and um, some of the different ideas that you can do for a 30 or 100 day project. Barb, she just wanted to do a color journal. So on day one, she started with a color wheel and color swatching. Bridget, she did a 100 day challenge and she did put a time limit to herself, which I think is very ambitious. I don't like time limits personally, but she completed it and, um, you know, she had, she made so much progress. She did so many different things and just really grew as an artist during that time. Here's another idea for one. Um, one of our members, Laura Wetz, she was midway through her 100 day project and she decided to do her running trails that she runs on. She's an avid runner and so she documents the sunlight through the trees, the paths, the memories that she gets, that meditative state that you get when you go running. She has some really fabulous paintings that have come out of, you know, just focusing on an idea for several paintings. So there's, um, when I say you want to try new things to build your style, um, you know, try different mediums, try different techniques, Try journaling to see what resonates with you. You know, use journal prompts. Like as you're painting, think about what you like. Do you like pink? Do you really not like turquoise? Do you dislike yellow? Do you love red? Do you love red next to yellow? You know, if you find something that you like that kind of makes you happy, that makes you stop and makes you go, damn, that's good. Do more of that and write it down so that you remember to do it in the future. And you can also do this as with things that you don't like, you know, like, oh, I don't like using black. I don't like using heavy lines. Um, I don't like overly blending. So you can also write down what you don't like and you can start working towards doing less of that. You know, see what resonates with you, and this will help you develop your own style. It, now, this doesn't happen overnight. It's uh, journaling for a week isn't going to get you there. Um, but it's a ha if you put this habit in practice and continue to do it, you'll see your style evolve. You'll go from doing step-by-step -step things and as you're doing the step-by-step -step things, you're generally painting in somebody else's style. You'll start seeing your own style evolve. It's like your signature. Your signature is you and it's unique. And it's, it's just an extension of you. And you'll find the same thing happens with your art. You'll find your voice subconsciously speaking through your art, whether it's the colors, the line work, the brush strokes, it will become you and a reflection of you. And you'll find that is the most powerful work that you can complete. I mean, this is how my work has evolved. Um, on the left, I thought I was doing some cityscapes. I was overly blending things. I was um, trying to be really, really realistic. And, you know, as of last year, I'm a little bit more my own personal style that I, that I do. Uh, I try to keep my brush strokes loose. I try to not blend too much. I love to push color. I love to explore different things. So over a decade plus, my work has evolved. What I was doing 10 years ago is different from what I'm doing now. And that's okay. Who I was 
10 years ago is different from who I am now. 10 years ago, I didn't have a child. 10 years ago, um, I wasn't a mother. 10 years ago, I lived on a different continent. Um, who you are is going to evolve and change. And so your work is going to be a reflection of that. And that is going to revolve, evolve and change, not revolve. I hope, I hope we're not revolving. <laughs> and I really recommend this resource, especially as you're getting started. It's called steal like an artist, and it shows you how to find inspiration and where to draw inspiration and not copy other artists. Um, and I, I do want to take a moment and, uh, just there's a, as you're learning and you're doing step-by-step -step things, you are copying and that is an integral part of the learning process. And you'll have teachers like myself. If you t take my classes, I encourage you to follow along. I encourage you to copy what is being taught now that is different from seeing an artist um, out in the wild or seeing, for example, my paintings that I go out and sell and you try and then you copying that and putting that back out into the world as your own work. That is copying, that is not getting inspiration. It is a very, very different experience when you are learning and it is put out there as a lesson by the artist and by the teacher versus um, you taking that upon yourself and deciding to put it out in the world as your own. So I do want to differentiate between the two. And um, the goal is for you to learn and find inspiration and then turn that into your own voice, your own experiences, your own artwork, your own vision. That is the most powerful thing you have, is you and your identity and your experience and how you see the world. Nobody else has that. Nobody else can take that from you. And so I encourage you to go forth and find that. Now, Carol, if you're a beginner and know nothing, don't worry about it. That's what step-by-step -step tutorials are for. That's what getting started is for. There are, there are th resources for you out there. And, you know, we have students in the Creative Circle, in my Confident Acrylics course, in our Painting of the Month Club that have never picked up a brush before and are seeing really, really incredible results. If you've never picked up a brush, if you're really uncertain about what to do and how to do it, that's actually great because you don't have preconceived notions. You know, we can, we can help you make progress faster because uh, you haven't established habits already. So I wanted to show you guys a couple of my VIP inner circle is the creative circle. And here are a couple of our artists and their styles. Um, here is Rose. She uses a lot of bold colors, dark shadows, brilliant whites. And then Agnes, um, she has a much softer style. It's a little bit more impressionistic. And these are two people who are evolving in their own work. And they've gone from doing the step-by-step -step tutorials to seeing something, wanting to put it out there and creating their own work with their own vision in their own style. Here's Diana. This is her own sunflower composition that she did. And it's a vastly different style from Andrea. And, you know, both of these are beautiful. Andrea's is much more minimalistic and simple, quiet, subtle. And Diana has this burst of sunflowers and um, all these beautiful colors and values. And this is how two people, even involved in, the, in taking the same lessons, can develop their very own style and take lessons that helps them become the artist they are meant to be. Now, what's the third way to find confidence in your painting? Go find some cheerleaders. Now, what do I mean by cheerleaders? Finding your cheerleaders, they are people that support you in your journey. 
um, they're going to be, they're going to, the best cheerleaders to find are actually people that are further along the path than you. You know, as, as a business owner, as an artist, I try to hang out with masters if I can, you know, like, um, I try to, they say you're the sum of the three to five closest people to you. So find people that are better than you so that you rise up and get better. You know, you'll naturally learn better ways of doing things. You'll learn tips and tricks. You'll learn um, shortcuts. You'll learn easier methods. You'll learn how to see things in a different way from what you're used to. If you put yourself in a situation where you're constantly surrounded by people that are better than you, you're going to keep improving. You're going to keep challenging yourself. You're going to keep having that abundance because there's not a finite place that you can go. It's infinite. And so the more that you grow, the more that you can grow. And the more that you see that's possible, the, the more that is possible. So find those people that are better than you. And then once you've made progress, turn around and reach down and help somebody else up. Help somebody else become better. Cheer them on. You know, let's create this wonderful circle of lifting each other up and then reaching down and helping others up. And then as we grow, there are people doing the same to us. And it's really this incredible feedback loop where we're all in it together. Um, there is no competition. We just all get better together. We all see more. There is no finite pie. We have abundance. We lift each other up. We support each other. And we all go places we never, ever, ever thought that we could together. Um, so these are the three ways that you can gain confidence in your artwork. The first is to paint a lot. Now, by paint a lot, if you remember, I mean find tutorials, find a teacher, um, find step-by-step -step instructions, do a 30-day or a 100-day project. So work on developing your voice. Think about what you like and what you don't like. Start doing more of what you like and start doing less of what you don't like. You know, try new mediums, try new techniques, try new things. See what, see what resonates and do more of that. You'll see your work slowly develop over time. Um, try fluid acrylics, try super heavy acrylics, try um, splattering. Um, see if you like flowers, see if you like birds. Try all these different things and do more of what you like and do less of what you don't. That's how your voice is going to develop. And then finally, find your cheerleaders. Find people that are going to support you, that cheer you on. Find people in a community that are better and further along the path than you are that are going to support you. And then once you see yourself make progress, help people that are just starting so that they can make progress and we can all go further together. You know, they, they say that you can f go fast by yourself or you can go further together. Let's go further together. It's really this simple. Just do these three things. Paint a lot, work on your own voice, and find your cheerleaders. Now, if you would like to continue... Um, we are going to be doing a adventure. It's going to be, some people call them challenges. It's going, I, I don't like the word challenge. It sounds like there's a lot of pressure. So we're going to be having an adventure. We're going to be tackling three subjects that everyone has said are really tough for them. Clouds, trees, and reflections on water. It's going to be kicking off January 23rd at 1 p.m., and uh, we'll be live the t Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And each session will be about 30 minutes. And I'll go through my three-step process so you can paint these subjects and feel confident painting them. Um, so if you would like to join that, we're going to be dropping a link in the comments. 
um, so that you can go ahead and join this. I know a lot of the people here today are actually already signed up, so we look forward to having you. That starts, like I said, uh, in about a week, January 23rd at 1 p.m. And the great thing about this is we've limited it to like five colors. We're keeping the supplies super simple. I want to really show you all how you can paint pretty much anything you want with um, very few supplies, very little investment, and you can just get going. Now, if you're still feeling kind of stuck, if you're still feeling like, gosh, it's the beginning of the year and I don't know where to start, we are also going to be posting a link. We have a PDF and uh, it, it is some ways to find inspiration. It's some ways to get started, kind of shake loose the cobwebs of the new year. And it gives you some uh, ways that you can kind of kick yourself in the pants a little bit and really get going. Um, so, and that's, that's about what I have for you today. I am going to... Um, stick around here for a minute and see if anybody has questions. Um, I want to I want to know what your um, what your intentions are. Are you doing a word this year? Are you are you doing intentions? Are you doing resolutions? Like I want to kind of know what you guys are all doing. Um, personally, I left resolutions behind a long time ago. I found that they last until maybe the first week of January. And um, I started doing intentions. But even then, my intent to have intentions didn't really last that long. Um, and uh, so now I'm down to, I've, I've simplified further, and I'm down to a word. Um, so my word this year is I really want to focus on having more play in my life. I want to have this year be a year of lightness and abundance and play and joy. Um, so, and I think that can all come from the word play. Um, Rosalba, we definitely have replays for the adventure. So, uh, we're conducting it all in a Facebook group. I'll be going live in the Facebook group. Um, the replays will live in the Facebook group. So we're making it super simple um, so that you can access it at your leisure. Um, I love this. Words, balance, and overflow. I love that. Abundance. Overflows and abundance. It's, I've spent the last few years as well really focusing on coming from a place of abundance instead of scarcity. And let me tell you all, the, the shift that I've seen in my life has just been magical. Um, that not just are you enough, but I'm a I'm abundant. There's there's so many resources that we are taught to hoard and hide and feel like they're scarce. And the second I stopped thinking about things as being scarce and started looking at them as as they were abundant, it just it made things so much more magical. Things started happening. It's like the universe started aligning. Um, so if you, if you all can think about making that mindset shift, it, it really truly is a magical thing. Um, so Carol, great. You signed up on the 23rd. If you should have received an email with your supplies. If you haven't received an email, please make sure to check your spam and promotions folder. Very often, uh, emails get kind of caught up there, and we want to make sure that you're receiving our emails so that we can uh, get you all of the information that you need um, so that you can come play with us and you can come paint with us. <clears throat> I love that. Making things easier. Not planning to make time, but taking time. Yeah, it's... it's um, I love that. There, the one thing that is finite is time. There is, but when we think about it, we, we have an abundance of time. It's just, how are we spending it? You know? Um, and when we feel like time is scarce, it's probably just because we're not 
spending our energy in the ways that best serve us. You know, it's, it's, um, how much time did I spend uh, just scrolling through the news, you know, like that, that doesn't really help me or serve me or make life better. So maybe instead of doing that, I should journal and, you know, de do some deeper dives into myself and what I want and work on, you know, manifesting that. Um, Susan said she has gratitude always. Um, always. I agree. Gratitude is such an important part of things. I am I lead with gratitude and abundance and it, I really have a pretty charmed life when I think about it. You know, I, I have a, a beautiful daughter, a wonderful husband. I live in a beautiful place. Um, it's January 12th and it's currently 70 degrees and I am in my happy place. Um, we get to go to art festivals in the weekends in the winter instead of slogging through snow. That is, that is my dream world. And I know some people enjoy other climates, but I, I find myself incredibly grateful and awash in abundance. And it's really pretty good. Um, yeah, Dom has a great quote right here. He says, Henri Matisse, uh, don't wait for inspiration. It comes while working. I a hundred percent agree. When I start journaling, when I start painting, when I start even sometimes just looking at inspiration, it, inspiration is not finite. If you pull that thread of curiosity, it will lead to more curiosity. There's not, like, the, there's an infinite number of things you can paint. There's an infinite number of things you can explore in your creativity. It isn't a finite thing that's going to run out. And you'll find that the more you work the muscle of exploring and creating and seeing and doing, the more that will be out there and the more possibilities you'll see. Um, a great example is uh, Taylor Swift kind of said the same thing. She said the more that she writes, the more inspired she is to write and the more topics she thinks to write about. Like have, have that uh, exponential number of things happened in her life not necessarily, but you, you start thinking of different ways. It's like when you do one of those mind maps and you, and you start with a word and then that word leads three words and each of those three words lead to three more words. Things start exponentially expanding when you start living your life like that. Um, Michelle, perseverance, that's another great word. Just, just keep going, just keep doing, just keep pulling that thread of curiosity and, you know, just keep putting yourself out there and expanding your creativity. It, it leads to a magical world. I promise. Um, well, thank you all so much. This has been such a pleasure. Um, I love thinking about the new year and what it can bring and all of the possibilities. So I hope you'll join me, um, on January 23rd. I was about to say July. January 23rd at 1 p.m. We're going to kick off our Paint Like an Artist adventure. And we're going to paint three paintings over five days. We're going to keep it very, very laid back, very easy. This is, this is not a challenge. This is an adventure. And I really look forward to having you join me um, as we start a wonderfully new creative year. So y'all have an amazing afternoon. And I'll see you in about a week. All right, everyone. Have a great time. Bye.